Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair, video number three, carburetor day. It's rainy, I guess what else would I be doing? So this is a Walbro HDA 60. The latest home light, uh, like the 180 XL, I guess it would have been the 180 and the, uh, the Bandit used these from the factory and then there was a carburetor kit that allowed you to convert the old XL2s, Super 2s, the metal bodies and some of the later plastic bodies to this style of carb. Uh, up until that really new style of plastic body where they had the different intake manifold. Anyway, this replaces an HDC and there's not a whole lot of difference other than it eliminates if I remember right, it eliminates the circuit plate entirely. That's not a removable assembly, it's all machined in here. So let's start off. We'll test it. See if it's got any pressure or if it'll hold pressure. And it's not. Leaking out as fast as I can. Wow. Okay. Well, at least we've been consistent so far. Everything we've touched has had leakage right out of the box, so that's good. If nothing else, that ought to make the folks that are shipping these in feel good because there was no way in hell they were going to run. Start on the fuel inlet side. We'll just see what we have here. That last Walbur HDC had a whole ton of nasty gas. Now this is still pliable, and I'm not seeing the residual of dried up fuel, and the screen is there. So I'm going to hope that this is an easier fix. And it just might be. Overall shape of the HDA is very, very similar to the HDC. You can see they change it over to that damn plastic fuel barb. You gotta be real careful with those. Once it cracks and starts to leak, you either find a steel one to replace it with, which isn't as easy as it sounds like, or you go the method I've done and slather it up with JB Weld. It's not pretty, but it's usually effective. So let's get this covered. Alright, that was easy. Too easy. Now right off the bat, I'm not seeing, this is a little crunchy, but I actually would have expected it to run. And, yeah, I can't explain why it wasn't holding pressure at all. You can see it's a twin screw, and they've got these two little holes there and there that's where the fuel inlet is and then it'll go into the point where these screws are metering it and then the passage into the carburetors behind these plugs now again I typically don't pound those out and do anything with them in fact the this one's gonna be a nozzle assembly and that's definitely not included in one of these kits so about the best you can do is pop your screws out, plug these holes with your hand, and then use your air hose and blast through, make sure it's coming through into the carb body. You can do that with carb cleaner as well. You just want to make sure you don't end up getting it in your eyes. So I'm not seeing what the problem is here, but we have a kit, and we're going to use it just so that we can eliminate that. Any one gasket happened to have a little teeny problem that we couldn't figure out or notice right off the top. And a lot of the same pieces that the HDC kit does. Okay. The other thing that this does away with is it does away with that check valve, which that is good. 
because they can be a source of trouble. All right, I want to pressurize this and see if we can figure out what the hell the leak's all about. So let's assemble this side first. You've got to have your inlet fuel inlet side where the fuel barb is sealed up or you can't use the pressure tester. And we should be like that. And then the gasket here. So those are going in the garbage. Okay. This still has both of its index pins on it, so that's nice. Let's see if we can get it to seal up good and tight. Okay. Now, in theory, at this point, that ought to hold pressure. It's not. Not for sour owl manure. So where is it leaking? Ha! Look at that bubble. All around that corner. Son of a gun. Bad boys, I don't know what the hell we can do about that. This cover's not ser whoop, not serviceable. Can't replace it. Man, is that leaking like hell. slowed it way down. I can't go much tighter without risking breaking this thing. No, oh, that's it. And that's a straight from the factory kit. And that needle's leaking a little too. That slowed way down. I can live with that. I know it looks bad, but it's not as bad as it seems like. <laughs> if you mix with uh, the apple scented uh, soap like I apparently did, it makes your garage smell good when you're doing it. Okay, let's release our pressure. And we're going to replace this inlet needle. And I want to check and see what it looks like. Now the seat, I'm going to get the spring out of here and I'll see if I can get you guys a view. Hopefully one of those angles is good. You can see the seat is clean. Super clean. No problems whatsoever. Now this kit comes with a brand new arm, axle, and needle. And I'm going to use it and just get rid of the old one. There's really no point. I'm going to use fresh rubber. The ethanol in the gas these days, folks, I can't say how much I hate it. It does so much damage to these engines. And even these rubber parts. I mean, on, in our cars, we're going through enough unleaded that it doesn't have time to draw the moisture, but I'll tell you what, Hoses that used to last 30 years sure as hell won't now. I'm going to stretch this spring like we did on that HDC. And that was about a coil's worth. Call that good. And we're going to put this back together and see if we've slowed that leak down. Again, these little... I had to disconnect this. These little parts like to move around and do things that you don't want them to do. So I recommend that you have a have some paper down like I do and not be right at the edge of your bench if you can avoid it. So that way when you drop something like I just did, you at least have a fighting chance 
of it not going down on the floor where it can disappear forever. Alright, so I didn't take that screw all the way out. I just got it up high enough that I could slip the axle out. So now I'm holding that in place. I'm just slipping it down. And I'm holding it. We'll put the screw down tight. Okay. Good movement. Looks like it's seating well. We'll see if it needs adjusted. Much better. Oh, yes, folks. I like that a lot. What a difference a new seat makes, or a new needle makes. And a little more pressure on that spring. I mean, it's still moving. We know that gasket has some, you know, some leak down back there. And it's going to leak down to the 2 to 3 PSI mark before it really stops. But you can see right there, just about 3.5, it's barely moving. So, I'm good with that. I'd prefer the gaskets didn't leak at all, but with that design cover, we're limited in what we can expect, I'm afraid. So let's assemble this under pressure. Make sure that needle's not needle arm is not set too high. Hey dummy, how about you put that in the right direction? Okay. Remember when you get the cover, you set it down. Number one, set it the right direction, like I didn't do. There we go. If that diaphragm is set too high, it's going to hit the cover and let you know. I'm going to make sure... Oh, there's good movement there. Real good. Yep. One pulse from the engine is act going to actuate that quite nicely. So we'll leave it pressurized, screw this down. As long as she doesn't release all of a sudden, we're good. So again, these things, especially these HDA carbs, pop up on eBay, I don't know, probably five, six, seven times a year, something like that. But I guarantee you, you're going to pay a minimum of 40 bucks and more likely double that with the cast of characters that are probably going to find them. So, you can rebuild them just like we did here. Now, if you don't have this pressure tool, that is an impediment. If you're working on saws much at all, I really, really recommend you get some sort of vacuum and pressure tool. You can get some cheapo stuff at Harbor Freight that's cheaper than that Mighty Vac 8500 I like so much that would do this same thing uh, at a fraction of the price. I think Harbor Freight's got some stuff at right around the 15 to to $20 mark and uh, they would work just as well. All you've got to do is be able to get it to a fairly tight fit on the carb needle or the fuel inlet barb, sorry. So there we are. She's back together. We've been through everything. You guys saw that was a simple carb. We still have pressure after assembling. I am satisfied that this will bolt on a saw and run. So Miranda, I'm going to get these packaged back up and I'll shoot you an invoice.